All right, so judging by the response to the first video I did reacting to the Hytale trailer, seems like a lot of people are looking forward to the game. So they made a blog post on their website a few days ago talking about how the world will actually generate in the game. And it has some cool stuff in it that I thought was worth checking out, maybe reading between the lines, seeing what some of it could mean for the actual gameplay. And there's just lots of screenshots that look pretty cool. So we're gonna go through the blog post and see what they've got. World gen, introduction, cool introductory picture. So the world is gonna be called Orbis, which is cool that it has a name, I guess. In Minecraft, when there's never been a name for where you are. There's the overworld, obviously, there's names for the dimensions, but is it Minecraftia? That's a name I've heard thrown around before, but there's never been an official name. Here, we can say Orbis. Sounds like Orbeez, or maybe it is pronounced Orbeez, like the things that people put in their bathtubs and make very colorful thumbnails for YouTube videos and you get millions of views and stuff like that. So I can just title playing with Orbeez for my Hytale videos and then it'll be accurate, technically, just spelled differently. And, and then people will watch it if for no other reason. So we got this screenshot here and it's showing that the world is broken into different zones. I don't know exactly what that means, right? Because it looks like you have something called the overworld that looks like Minecraft overworld here. Then you have something that's more along the lines of a mesa or a desert, if I'm equating it to Minecraft, or of an ice tundra sort of biome. But then you have something that almost looks like the nether over on this side. These haven't been unveiled yet. They look very corrupted, but that's probably just the effects concealing them. They might not look anything like the purple smokiness. But I guess they're all part of what would be called the overworld. It says this piece of concept art is one of the first we produced when the development of Hytale began. It depicts four of the zones that make up the planet of Orbis or Orbeez, which is where the bulk of Hytale's storyline takes place. You also get from that that there's actually a storyline to it, so I wonder if there will be quests that you can actually opt into, dialogue with NPCs of things that you can actually do. Could it be randomly scattered though and procedurally generated where you find places to opt into the quests? But it doesn't seem like you'll be going through portals and having different dimensions. It's kind of like all there and then maybe depending upon how far you walk, how far you travel, you'll run into the different zones, but all speculation, we'll see. It also says where the bulk of the storyline takes place, which implies that there might be some off-world experiences, one of which they talk about a little bit further down in this post. We get to it in a moment, but I would imagine they're not revealing everything before the game goes out, so there will be some surprises. So this here is just a uh, large wide shot of zone one, looks very peaceful, but it says that in Zone one, you have different biomes. You have forests, lakes, hills, ravines, and more. So it's like, even though zone one almost looks like just a biome, like a forest biome or something, I guess within that zone, there are a bunch of different types of biomes that all sort of fit more of the green and grassy, pleasant zone look, something like that. And even this screenshot here, which looks pretty dramatically different, I guess is still part of that zone one. It doesn't suggest anything different, but I guess we'll see, or maybe this is where zones are meeting, because this could almost be more of that frozen tundra one that you saw in the first concept art. And this is like that grassy zone one, plains biome zone, not a biome, it's a zone. It says each zone has its own set of blocks and distinct content, including furniture sets, NPC races, creatures, critters, plant life, weather, and geology. Hey, can, can we not have rain? It's just a personal question. Or just a way to disable rain, like if you don't want it, you can just get rid of it. I don't like rain. I don't know if anyone here watching my videos has ever gathered that before, but rain is unnecessary. We can just pretend it's raining, but I just don't have to see it. So that the video quality doesn't decrease, nor does the stream. Which makes the stream quality go to poop. Okay, anyway, cool. Exploring a cave in Borea will be very different from exploring a cave in the Emerald Grove. And I guess we have a couple of comparisons of what pre-built structures might look like in different zones. It's kind of interesting. So with the, the coasts, it seems like, at least from what I gathered through this post, you almost have just like a, a coastline for the world. It's not like with Minecraft where as you travel, you know, this biome will turn into an ocean, then you fly across the ocean for a little while, and then you run into a landmass again, and then you fly across that landmass, you'll run into another ocean. It seems like here, and I could be wrong, speculation, there is a, a big ocean and you fly into it and you know like that's that. If you, once you're out into the ocean, you're, you're in the ocean. But there is stuff to explore in the ocean. There's varying coastline styles depending upon what zone you're in and what sort of biome is intersecting with the ocean where it's where it's meeting. So you got like different kinds of beaches. This is like a very Northern California kind of beach, whereas this is 
I don't know where this this would be like a tropical or maybe like an African beach or something like that not really sure I haven't traveled to enough places in the world doesn't look like a beach I've been to before though so then it says the unique world gen elements continue underwater. So some of like the zone features, it continues into the ocean. So you'll get unique stuff there. But then the reason why, here's why I think that the ocean, like once you go into it, that's just the ocean. Then it's, it's gone, right? It says venture far enough from land, you'll encounter the ocean shelf, a sudden drop off at the edge of each zone that leads to the deep ocean. The deep ocean is effectively a zone all by itself. It holds many dangers and rewards for intrepid explorers to discover. You'll have to prepare carefully in order to survive the depths. Couple things that I gather from this. One, I don't know, are the worlds infinite? Can you walk off as far as possible in any, dire any direction? It'll just keep generating terrain or are worlds finite? Because if you know that the ocean is the ocean, you never run into anything after the fact, right? When you start swimming off, eventually there's gonna be an end to really what you're gonna do. And I'm very curious if it's like, once you walk far enough towards a particular zone, is that kind of the end? Is this not meant to be that sort of endless world generation like you get in Minecraft? Is it meant to be a different experience in that regard? So I'm, I'm very curious to see where that goes, but the way this is worded kind of implies there is more of a, a finite end versus you being able to go out millions of blocks until, yeah, I, I get it, Minecraft worlds aren't infinite. You hit the far lands and things start to mess up, but whose world is actually gonna get that big realistically? No one's, it's effectively infinite. So even though I know that 30 something million or however far the far lands are is still an infinity away from infinity, I realize that, but yeah, whatever. But the underwater content looks really cool. As I sort of said in the in the trailer when I was watching it, like this looks like Subnautica stuff. And also I love how they say you're gonna have to prepare in order to explore the deep ocean. That's something that even with the aquatic update in Minecraft, there's no real, hey, I gotta gear up, we gotta get a scuba suit and we gotta tier level it up and make sure we got the best gear so I can hold my breath for a lot longer. It's kind of, it's limited what you're able to do. Here it's like, okay, we're gonna gear up. We wanna explore the deep ocean. Maybe there are particular dungeons down there that you can get to. And so you have to really gear up towards doing that sort of thing and then set out to explore it. And that sounds way cooler. I love having that sort of progression to ocean and, and underwater type stuff. I want some Subnautica in my life because I'm still waiting on Subnautica below zero. So it says, beyond the oceans lie the infinite lands. Hightail storyline won't take you out that far, but our world gen tech will ensure there's always something for you to find beyond the edges of the world. So it's like, it's weird. So you can keep going forever, like it'll, it'll function, but there's not necessarily a use in going out that far. And does it change? Does it become less interesting? I don't know, we'll see. I mean, it sounds like maybe we'll keep going, but they say there is an edge of the world. So I'm curious where the line is drawn there. So we got caves and dungeons that look super cool. And it's just a whole bunch more variety when underground and mining things versus it just being like, hey, occasionally, very, very rarely, usually when you're looking for it, you'll run into a stronghold or maybe just a zombie or skeleton spider dungeon underground in Minecraft. This is like, dude, you got some serious underground exploration here with all these things you're able to find. Like, look at this. This is just a random dungeon that can generate. It says dungeons uh, are a little different. They comprise multiple changer chambers and encounters joined by connecting passageways, often culminating in a final room, providing challenges and special rewards tailored by our world team. Yeah, that seems pretty cool. And I think you can run into them randomly and they'll have an above ground structure to go along with them. So I'm sure some of them will be like, you coincidentally run into them while you're exploring a cave or mining. But some it's like, oh, this is marked by a structure above ground that I can actually see. And I know I can explore this whole thing and perhaps get some cool loot. So this is just like a bunch of the world generation elements. They have a bunch of varieties. They've made almost 4,000 prefabs that'll go into the game. A lot of that is probably eaten up by trees as you can see here in this photo, because they gotta get a lot of trees in there, but pretty cool, like, dude, that's just such a cool structure to run into somewhere randomly in the world. I love it and I wanna check it out. And I hope that that also extends underground. And then there's also this over here. I don't know what that is, but it looks cool. Now, earlier on when they say that the majority of the Hytale storyline takes place in Orbeez, I don't know if when they say the other stuff, some of it will take place off world. Maybe it's this portal thing, or if there's gonna be secret things they reveal later on, you'll find out when we end up playing the game. But I guess there are these dungeons where when you explore them, you'll at the end of them find a portal that you can go through. And that portal will take you to some place like this. It was just concept art for the time being. So these are illustrations, but I guess like once you go through the portal in the overworld, 
whatever zone you're in, you'll find yourself in some sort of island in the middle of nothingness in the sky, which is kind of cool. And then you'll be able to, I don't know, find loot, fight a boss or something like that. So it seems, seems like some pretty cool stuff. I look forward to it. But it doesn't seem like you actually build the portal. It's something that you'll find in one of these dungeons. But who knows, maybe there will be portals that you can build in order to check out other, other dimensions. We haven't heard anything about other dimensions other than these portal dungeons, but who knows. Got some Bob Ross happy little accidents. <laughs> Which I guess happened, they're just talking about, hey, sometimes we, uh, we coded all these rules in, but sometimes you have different elements of land and world generation that intersect with each other, and we didn't even predict it would look like that. But hey, turns out it looks pretty cool when it, it doesn't mess up and spit out a bug or crash the game. Because I'm sure that happens a lot when you're developing a game. Uh, and then at the very end here, they sort of wrap it all up by saying all the world generation systems that we've created will be fully customizable by content creators. You can tweak world gen rules or write your own through configuration files. You can also build and share your own prefabs and dungeons, including instance portal dungeons, and you can create and configure your own blocks, environments, and even NPCs. Combining all these options together gives content creators the power to craft biome zones and ultimately worlds of their own. Well, that's pretty cool. So you could have a, a like a... I don't know, a mod pack where it just takes place basically in a completely different world and you get like tons and tons of dungeons or new dungeons that people have created. It's almost like you can create a mod pack without even having to, you know, have additional files outside of the game. You can just do it within the game itself. Sounds like that, at least. So this is a cool post. I'm stoked. I want it to be released probably going to be a little while. I have no insider information. I just want to say I'm learning things with the rest of you. If I ever do get insider information, I will let you know and disclose that. But for now, I'm learning everything with everyone else and uh, I'm stoked to play it whenever it's ready to go. Like I said, have no idea. But uh, I thought it was worth taking a look at this post. Hopefully you've enjoyed. You can go back and watch my reaction to the trailer if you want. Link it in the description. Something like that. Um, make sure to like if you liked. Check out the playlist. If yeah, I'll, I'll make a high tail playlist. I'm sure, there'll be more videos leading up to it. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you next time.